Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Gates of Pirate Break, the game alpha edition number 18. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. Joining us today by ZK. How's it going ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Excited for another tournament. And uh, yeah, we have an exciting one this week once more. We do. It's a bit of a smaller one this week, but we have a lot of our strong hitters here. Magical and Santa Claus both are top contenders in our player base overall. Yeah. Itlander, of course, being a, a up-and-comer. Up and yeah. I mean, they started with the Alpha a few months ago, but they have been definitely practicing and grinding their way into improvement. Well, Wajizu and Golden Tigger, also known as Mr. Kareem, are very new players who came in for the Alpha Trials and have been just grinding since. Oh yeah, but, Zoo and uh, Karim have been playing the most lately, always asking for games uh, at every hour of the day. And uh, quite literally for Zoo, he's really asking every hour because sometimes just not a playtest are available, so anyone who wants to join, feel free to ask for a key as well to join us in the pre-alpha and start playing games. Yeah, that's absolutely part of the thing. There's a raffle going on throughout the entire stream, so you'll see in the chat, there'll be raffles, you can type for a key, and you'll get a key. Do give me a sec, because I have to actually get the key uh -huh. to you when... It's not automatic, but yeah, you know, I I see that who's won the key, so I can get you the key when you need it. Yeah, you'll get them by day's end. Exactly. Actually, probably get them by the the game's end, really. Oh wow, really quick on your part, isn't it? Fast shooter. Yeah, I try to keep up. Nice. All night. right, so we're we are opening today's event with a winner semifinals match between Santa Claus and Itlander, the two strongest players who are up against each other, right up the top. Yeah, Santa, of course, one of our most known players, as you said earlier, one that's won a few tournaments, that often finishes second to Magico. He's a bit of a Kong here. Uh, but yeah, he, he he's always a strong contender. He might just win it today. He always comes up with weird strategies. But of course, we've been on the current you patch for a little bit. Do. You yeah, never know what Santa's... Okay, you don't know what Santa's going to do, but <laughs> let's be honest, the last few times, they have been actually playing a straight game, and it's gone well for them. Oh yeah, Santa plays well. Like that's the thing, right? That's that's how you want to play. You want to be able to surprise people with the with the little cheesy stuff, the little things that just oh, yeah. go against the normal. But then if you can play a normal game as well, it's like, well, I never know what it's gonna do. He can just go out there and play completely macro or full me out. And because of that, you have to be careful. You can't just commit that's, to full macro. That's the real mix up. Yeah. We we'll look at other players like Magical. Well, actually, Magical also does whatever. Oh, so. Magical Magical started this. Yeah. <laughs> Magical, yeah, Magical trained Santa Claus. That was how it went, right? Something yeah, like well, that. Yeah, they were the two most active players for a while, so of course they're only going to play each other, and they're all going to see all the cheese and practice it against each other and see what works, what doesn't, and yeah, just kill each other with it as much as they could. Exactly. So we are going to be very... I'm very excited to see how these players play it out. Itlander, of course, is more of a standard-ish player, if you could say. Yeah, well, I mean, he's done He's done his fair amount of Absolver rushes, you know, he's done a proxy Absolvers like everyone in this latest patch, as it's been a bit of yeah. the meta build for Croft. Uh, we have been on this patch for a few weeks now, so players have started to uh, understand what works best in this meta. It seems to be a, a bit of zone control has been very powerful. We'll see if that how that shapes up in the next balance patch. But for now, we do see the zone control power and affecting the, the player choices a lot. Exactly. So we are hopefully going to be seeing some hopefully seeing a bit of variety there. I think oh. as as it has been, we've had enough time to really play around with this, get some ideas of how to approach the game, maybe not always absolve or how to deal with absolvers. Mm -hmm. No, we, we've had a good mix-up, especially with Aru. At first, Aru was always like, okay, what do you want to go for? It's always Frums or Resonance. It's, those are the main two counters. Either you go for From, so they don't Absolvers don't shoot up, so you can take care of them that way, or just force them to stay home to defend everything. Or you go for Resonance, who just outrange them. And yeah, that's an easy way to deal with them. Just attack them while they cannot attack you. Yeah, and basically just have until the counters to that come up, and the area and such. Yeah, it, it has been a great mix of uh, just changing it up, changing mm -hmm. unit compositions, changing what early builds they go for. In case it seems that we're in game with Itlander in the blue in the top left playing his favorite, Ajari. In the bottom right, we have Santa Claus playing Orzum in the red. And off the bat, both players are going... You okay, go first. keep an eye on these moats because Itlander... Itlander is going to be showing with off they want. They want early expansion. As to Santa Claus, both players want to go for that macro play and set up for the mid-game. 
See, this is quite interesting. You see, Itlander went for the E for first, and Santa did as well. That's one of the new developments that in the, in the newest meta, where players have been talking about getting that very first E for. At first, you thought it was just weaker than going for a faster eco. Then the, the players have lately realized that getting that first E for just means you get your absorbers just slightly faster, like a 10 second difference. So yeah, that's been their latest development in the meta. And Itlander, Santa, I think Magic also is going to be doing that a lot if they play Croft. And that's. Again, part of the Absolver meta, both making it and countering it. Yeah. Like, you need no, to I... have that early ether to make it work, so... Makes well, sense. Well, you can actually get it still after the, the first expansion, just get your, bit, your income a bit faster on the alloy. But yeah, I just love this little developments in the game, right? Just seeing those little uh, synchrosies <laughs> of, I just want that ether a second faster, and that lets me get that a bit faster. My alloy is almost not the, uh, slower. But then we'll see someday, oh, you know, people are going to go double ether and then expand. It's like, oh, wow. What type of build you want to go for that? I kind of hope that becomes more normal, simply because having, the, like, if you notice in Lost Province, uh, for those who watch a lot, players in Lost Province will frequently go for a fast expansion. We're seeing both, both Santa and Atlanta go for it today. Most of the time, we do see players going for early expansion, which is an option. It's just the Lost Province map design tends to encourage players, because it's easy to defend, to go for the early fast expansion, which makes it feel like the only way to play. So yeah. I like there being fast expansion as an option for the players but not the only way players can play or at least the way that's seen as like the absolute best yeah well you know sometimes players will always say oh you know this player thinks this is the best so everyone's going to copy that player and then oh that's you true play or you play arrives it's like you know i'm just gonna do that's like oh shit we don't know how to deal with that until you figure it out and then the meta will change but like like you've said for a long time this has been lost province lost province also a very long rush distance between the two naturals and santa being <laughs> Oh, speaking man. of speaking of rushing, Santa with the Centauri and the Lander's expansion, going for that early rush to be able to do a bit of economic damage. And as long as they get a couple moats, I mean, really, they've come out ahead. Oh, he One moat down, Eatlander Lander yet to respond. Eatlander Lander focusing far more on getting the Pyre, which is a bit dangerous. At the same time, Eatlander Lander, they lost their economy. They do have a bit more forward of base. Their re potential revenge could be all the sweeter for having that stronger army to go for it. Yeah, Santa is going to the back of it. He wants to keep doing more damage or just, you know, just hide for a little bit and then force his opponent to come chase him. Anything to gain time, right? At this point, just Santa needs to gain back time before the next push happens. At the same time, he can get a lot more uh, coming up. His tech, what is he teching to? Okay, Absolver's ass has been the Of meta. course. Yeah, no, it's like, it, it's, you see a Karath, you see five minute Absolver, or not five minutes, you see three and a half minute Absolver. That is how it works. Ah, current meta. Current meta, yes. There are changes in the pipe. But they're not in yet. So I yep, hope you like Absolvers. Hey, I do love Absolvers. I love their miniguns. I love the spinning pizzas. You know, Absolvers are just some of the best design. I mean, I just love the design of it, right? It's not... Uh, maybe mm -hmm. the gameplay is a bit too prevalent right now. But we've always had past the zone control, which are just too powerful and they're not powerful enough. And they come back and forth in the meta. I kind of like just having them a lot. Just They're fun, right? They have two pizzas on their head. They're shooting miniguns of lasers at them. It's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's not great. Oh, Santa's... Oh, that's Santa having the place. high ground here will be a bit of a challenge for Eatlander to break, but Eatlander having the stronger one to work with, as long as Eatlander pushes in at the right time, in the right place, best case, forces Santa to attack them, Eatlander's going to be way ahead with their army. Oh yeah, those four absolvers versus only two, that can make such a difference. The opposite, Sipari can close in the distance a bit faster. Okay, here come in the four absolvers. Just have that right. four against Eatlander. four. No one wins this. No one wins this. Eatlander dropping... Going first, gets a, no kills, but does force Santa Claus back. Santa Claus not yet deployed. Eatlander, long to deploy first, does have the advantage. Unfortunately, the deployment was in the wrong position. Eatlander getting completely flanked by Santa Claus. No yeah. advancement for Eatlander. Even cost him his Evans Aegis there. Pretty, wait, is it Heaven's Aegis for that one? Yep, uh, that is yeah, Heaven's Aegis. Perfect. So Heaven's Age is there. Pretty expensive spell using his first pyre and didn't really get the value for it. So as long as he keeps map control, he still has a decent amount of pyre. Santa's using all his pyre to put down some uh, tower foundations and subsequent citadels. So a bit of different gameplay, right? Santa playing defensively, making his army slowly but surely. Lander tried to do some damage, didn't work out, heads back home, gets a third. Both players going for the third. Santa going for the air. A bit more of a direct counter to the Absolvers. There, are, Itlander going for the same thing with apparently a transition into anti-air as well. Both players know your opponent's gonna go air. You want to set up the reliquary for the Zephyrs. That's your that is your 
baseline anti-air that Eatlander's going for, which is going to be a slight advantage to them. Eatlander... Eatlander is going to have an easier time dealing with Santa Claus's army just for Santa Claus not having the anti-air... The Well, at least, not having the ground-based main army anti-air. Yeah, but so far in this game, Santa doesn't seem to care too much. All he's doing is slowly expanding, playing the Orzum game of slowly expanding. So Santa's game is really one of patience, building the ultimate army who, to hopefully beat down Atlanta. He believes himself to have a better late game than his opponent. And, you know, getting these little advantages also helps as well. Getting a few kills and setting up right in the opponent's face with the Absolvers already set what? up. Oh, the Zentari getting thrown into the meat grinder. Itlander, from that advantage, able to start ripping apart the rest of Santa Claus's force. As long as they get the vision on these Absolvers, they're fine, but they lose it. The Scepter from Santa Claus also cleans that up. So, despite an early loss, Santa Claus able to pull ahead and take that hill. Yeah, getting that, that sit out of the top. Now, Illander might try to break it as those those Absolvers are actually very weak, not much HP. But once they're set up, it's very hard to just jump on top of it without your own dislodgers. To be fair, to be fair, jumping on top of it is exactly what these Zephyrs Itlanders built can do. Definitely, definitely can. Jump on top, s snipe it, run away if they so desire. Uh, but instead, Santa scouting around, checking exactly what his opponent is up for. Won't see too much besides two Sentinels coming up for his opponent, stopping the vision from getting too powerful for his opponent. And there's no really anti-air. There's no anti-air here. Oh, this is huge. This is Itlanders' chance. And... Oh. They'll need the Warden on, on deck, but they... No, they don't care. They're going for it. They have the vision. They know it's weak. They know it's, the time is now. And they go for a One is all over down. Two is all over down. Santa Claus only has two left. One is set up. Neatlander does not care. They've gotten their objective. The hill has been retaken from Santa Claus. And none, not a moment too soon either. Yeah, letting that Citadel go up would have been very hard to dislodge. About 2,000 HP on that. It's so, it's so obnoxious to destroy, you know? Once it's in position, especially with Orzum's special abilities, he's able to reduce the damage on it as well, so not much, uh, very hard to dislodge afterwards. Santa would have had a field day if they could have had that Citadel, but now Eatlander, they have the western side of the map pretty well up to them. Santa Claus not in great position to defend the tower here, and they know it. Going to try to hold the northeast ramp because that's the only one they really have left to keep the center control. Ooh, it's under playing well, getting the pyro control of his own, making sure to get both center camps. The ones on the sides a bit ignored, but we don't have to worry about those too, too much at the moment. Uh, Santa's still not having that much anti-air, though. Could cause him some troubles, as he wants his scepters to be able to dish out that damage. But Sentinels are there for his opponent. Santa? Yeah, not much anti-air yet. They have invested. So give it a few minutes, they will have Zephyrs. It's just, Itlander got way ahead of them on that front. And Itlander's been just going from strength to strength as a result. Attack coming in here. Itlander pushing Santa away, stopping that backline front or backline rocks from getting taken out. Santa, are they gonna set up in the hill? Itlander, you gonna go for it? This is this is risky. It's a very even army. Yeah, he he's no. smart and doesn't go for it. Oh, he can get for that tower though. He jumps on top of it. Santa is not in position, but he's able to flank if he wants to. And no, Empire and Broken goes up immediately. Santa wants none of that nonsense. That provides enough time to, to get back. I mean, it burns the pyre, but still, it gets... It lets their army regroup, which is yeah. all Santa needed. It's a good note, though. You look at the pyre, only 25 for Santa, very far from from doing any damage. To, yeah, to uh, a lot of those uh, early Zentari coming into their opponent's base to take care of it. But <laughs> Moat's HP no. is pretty high, and their DPS yeah, is not that bad. <laughs> Moat DPS is really good. Never forget that. The workers in this game are, are threats. No, like, wait, they're quite. If bullish. you get if you get attacked, they can defend you at least a little bit. Yeah, not against this army, not against free absolvers. Oh God, no. Zephyr. no, 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 no. This the, like Eatlander's got this. Santa Claus has to, forced to retreat and into San, into Eatlander's absolvers. This is exactly the situation Eatlander wants. But Eatlander they... has to be careful now. They're about <laughs> to get surrounded. That's a big army for Santa. Santa jumping on top of Zentari uses he uses a recall from there, a good deliver from Evil to get out as fast as he can, and. Except for those two little Zephyrs at the back, they can run away as fast as they can. And at least distract his opponent for a little bit, and no, they die. They die, but they die to keep Itlander's rest of the forces from dying. Yeah. Santa though now back at having the Pyre advantage. Itlander back down to only 20 using the Deliver from Evil, costing him all his Pyre. That's okay, he can reuse it a bit later. Santa probably putting down and a few more And more importantly, Santa, 
Santa maintaining some center control here, but they're getting flanked. This could be it. Santa Claus, if those scepters go down, that'll be it for Santa. As it stands, their resolvers are not lasting too much longer either. Flank, however, is being countered. Santa Claus did have an resolver position, which Itlander is unable to break. Santa Claus completely wiping out Itlander's army. The tables turn thoroughly as Santa Claus now has an opening to just run roughshod over Itlander's base. Yeah, Elder heading back home, heading back to his home citadel. He can heal up a bit there and also get that little bit of damage boost. Santa behind that, pushing forward, wants to get some of those important buildings. And getting, oh. at the very least, the workers. The workers are set up, but the Absolver is set up for himself, and Itlander doing his best to just survive this attack. Itlander gets one more shot at this. Does only have to deal with a couple of Absolvers set up at a time. The, that has been a saving grace. The Zephyrs to go down as they go down it makes it easier to get rid of the scepters but it's simply not fast enough not enough anti-air here for Ridlander. santa claus on the loss of absolver is still going to be pushing back or at least regrouping hollowers coming for santa claus they have the tools to break Itlander's base oh, Itlander the in a desperate defense the hollowers getting surrounded by Sapari. that's an expensive loss each Sapari is only alloy but the absolver comes in at the last minute and that's going to help quite a bit uh but not quite enough just just enough for the Hallowers to reach back and head home. Behind this, Santa had tried to establish his tower at the top of the uh, uh, ramp again. And Santa moving back. Those those Sephardi need to head back. They don't want to get shot down. They've, they've done their job. They, they dev, they've done more than their job. They got a couple of Hallowers, got a ton of Absolvers. These are heroes, these Sephardi. Yep. Here come the Castigators to deal with those with those pesky pesky Scepters. scepters. Yeah. And I guess pesky not really the name for it. And, how, with how tanky they are, they have so much HP for the for some flying units, able to dish out damage and take it too. And it's worth noting what what we're coming up next to. Santa Claus has invested heavily in ground based artillery. Itlander has invested in thrones. Mm. A pretty classic follow up. We've seen it quite a bit. Able to de dish damage, deal with it as well. Well, more importantly, given Santa Claus's army, thrones basically don't have to care. Like, the, the Zephyrs are going to be a bit of a concern, but the Hallowers are not. <laughs> Hallowers, Absolvers, Scepters, all of them don't shoot up. Of course, as you're pointing out right now, Santa has the economical advantage, and that can make a difference in the long run, as the base will start to mine out pretty soon in the next few minutes, and then it'll all be about those extra bases. Dervish coming in from the back, what's made Santa's reputation the very start, coming back in to deal as much damage as they can to those alloy lines. Inlander... Getting engaged with, they do not want to take this fight. They have, they aren't set up. They haven't got their army quite as built up as they needed to be. They Atlanta were not looking for a fight. They were looking for more pyre. Atlanta has a decent army. And, and Santa's really, really been on point today with all those harassment. Sometimes he just loses units for nothing, but it's never really for nothing as you distract your opponent, get him out of position, and Itlander has to be careful. He needs to run back before he takes too much damage. Hallowers killing some Sipari. The, the throne at the back? The throne? To go down? Throne gets jumped on, goes down. Itlander has nothing other than Sipari and some some Castigators, a little bit of anti air a ton of anti-ground, but nothing that is able to, to contend with the army Santa Claus is throwing at them. Yeah, Santa has the bigger army now, and if he wants to pounce, he might just be able to do it. The Aoife's running out of the main, and no more attack is coming. Santa's main army is here, and he seems content to simply build another citadel at the front for his opponent. As he has been harassing quite a bit, checking out the base of this That's dervish. That's off, left. too. That's, like, look how, how few thrones there are. That is because Itlander has been harassed so... Like, Santa Claus has harassed Itlander so successfully, and so consistently, that Itlander simply hasn't been able to get the alloy needed to get the thrones and maintain the rest of their army. Yeah, behind all this, Santa looking for another avenue in. Maybe he wants to take out his, his opponent's fourth and fifth. At least gets the pirate camp. And behind this, Atlander looking for a point of attack, wondering where his opponent's army is. He sees the two dervish, but there's about to be a lot more than just dervish coming for his base. It's spotted. Are they going to... Atlander hopefully cancels this expansion, but they have been a little bit... They, oh no. The big trouble they've been having so far, Santa Claus has, really, has been taxing Itlander's attention so thoroughly this game. Yep. It, all the time, it can't, Santa Claus will... I mean, they're harassing on all angles, they're attacking from all fronts. They have... Like, Santa Claus simply has not let Itlander breathe. And it's it's paying off in spades for Santa. Yeah, Itlander finally coming for a counterattack of his own in the north, northeast, but at the same time, this battle is all that really matters now. Santa pushing forward on his opponent's army, decides, you know, 
He doesn't need to push those three absolvers. He has the army advantage. He has the economical advantage. He doesn't need to push into his opponent. He has so many advantages for going for him. Well, had the economical advantage. At the moment, it's actually starting to even out. Oh, yeah. Losing that base. That that will need sense immunis. Oh, three towers there. Okay, that base is un unattackable. Oh, yeah. No, this is... That ain't... That's not that happened there. Not, not without the full attack force. But that's still... You know, that's... That is a ton of pyre. Like, that could have been a pillar and a half. Well, don't forget, each citadel also gives some power regeneration, so... Good point. In the long Good run, point. It, in the long run, it can help. Is it worth it uh, for those early attacks? Well, Santa's never been playing for the early game today. He's been playing all about uh, continuous attacking, and... Ooh, Dervish commit just in the right moment to save this base. Castigator probably doesn't want to be here. No, the Dervish are... Wait, how are the Dervish not succeeding? They're, they exist to counter Zapari. Ah, it's always a game of numbers at that point. He needs to have perfect micro and just zoom in and out. Well, I can't say it better myself. Santa Claus fully maxed out in supply. From here, Itlander is going to have to push through like this army and a half simply because they, they Santa Claus can rebuild. Santa Claus will be able to trivially rebuild from any point. Yeah, at this point, the limiting factor Santa will literally be his e he, He's not out, but is going up slowly and surely. <clears throat> See what they lost the main base. They, they lost the main base, lost the natural. The third is... Like, that's three bases mining, so they got something. Oof. Oh, Eatlander. Eatlander with the side attacks. It's risky coming in here, Shar. Drop the Ostrike, get a decent amount of damage in. More importantly, the Castigators to take out Eatlander's Thrones. Santa Claus wiping out Eatlander's army once again. And there is nothing here Elander can do. Their army has been destroyed. Santa's army is as strong as ever. And that, yeah, deliver... no, that means there is no defense. Yeah, Deliver from Evil wasn't quite enough. Only pulled back two Absolvers in this. He has five left. But with the size of Santa's army, even zone control can't control any zone. What from those Halvers dishing down from the sky, mm -hmm. those lightning bolts, killing everything in their in their way. And Elander's doing his best to keep alive. But at this point... Seems like uh, it might just be too little too late as Santa pushes forward, kills another base. And we'll keep doing so for the future of this game, whatever's and left Eatlanders, of it. Well, here's Eatlander's last stand. Their units are up, their resolvers are down, their throne is getting torn to pieces. And do they even have swords upgrade? I don't know that they do. Resolvers trying to get in position, but they were a little bit too far back as the fight started. Santa Claus was able to wipe out... Most of the units have split Eatlander's force in half, and now Eatlander might be able to hold for a little while longer, but Santa Claus does not care. They have the third down. They have the counter force for everything Eatlander's throwing at them. I'll say this is not the most cost-effective fight for Santa, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. What do they matter. care? <laughs> yeah, exactly. they, they have a two-base two lead and came in with a 4,000 army value advantage. Hey, it's only 3,000 now. Oh my god. Only 3,000? Oh no! Santa Claus, down. what will everyone really do? How will you survive this? Oh, he'll need another gift from, from God or something. He needs a... Oh, he's still harassing behind all of this. Yep. Or he in And there harass. it is! Santa Claus gets the first game. This is the best of three. Behind all of this, uh, Zoo did, be, did beat Mr. Krim 2-0. So he will be. So Zoo will be facing Magical in the second round. Well, we're going to game two of Santa vs. Itlander. Winner of this match will go against the winner between Magical and Zoo. And well, it is going to be a bit of an uphill struggle for Zoo. Magical first seed for a reason. Oh yeah. He's, uh, he's won a number of tournaments. He was second in the, la in the last uh, big tournament, Alpha. What was it? The, yeah, was the Alpha it? Trials. Alpha Trials, there we go. Yep. It was the second place to Alpha Trials, the biggest tournament we've had to date. And yeah, he's uh, he's the person to beat. They've actually gotten the most first place wins, in, like most wins in the Alpha. Yeah, like the entire surprised. Alpha period. Well, there's also the a point of he plays more than most other players. Uh, he's He's been consistently playing in most tournaments, which will help jump up the numbers as being the best player that plays a lot. The one that did win the Alpha Trials, Hydra, uh, does not participate in as many tournaments as uh, some others. He will be back for the Alpha Trials. But yeah, there will be more of them. We haven't gotten oh, an yeah. official date yet, but there are supposed to be more of them. Oh yeah, definitely. The money is uh, committed from uh, 
shoot, I forgot the name of the company that's helping Ultra out. Ultra Esports. Ultra Esports, there we go. Yeah, Ultra Esports is ready to help out with that. And uh, another game of Lost Province. Ooh, Santa Claus going for, looks like, Zul this time. Ooh. No, Zul just kind of fits Santa's personality a bit. Oh yeah, there it is. Zul against the jury. Mm -hmm. So Santa switching out from going hyper-defensive to being super sneaky. You know, actually has always been playing a jar that is really his main immortal. Um, a lot of players have have been switching in and out. We have YJ Zoo who only plays Orzum. We have Idliner who only plays a Jari. Santa uh, tr seems to trade up with every single immortal. Same same for Magical. Uh, some some players have preferences. Some don't. Yeah. It's always interesting to see how they play out, and I'm quite happy that someone is a, in the Jari main as before. You know, in the last year or so, there weren't really Jari mains as much. Uh, but that no, Jari had a lot of issues. Like, Jari just was kind of a weaker Orzum for a while. Yeah. I mean, the Sipari were great. I just love the Sipari, but... Me too, but it was just the fact that you didn't have... You didn't have a great Dislodger, and Pillar was so strong. Oh, it yeah. cost half as much as it does now. Ooh. Okay, Santa was going for, his, for two of them, uh, but then cancelled one of his... Uh... Oh, okay, he saw his opponent did not go for a second base, so cancelled one of his Alters. Only have one base worth of units, and... Getting the E from all. Yeah, Santa... Santa will want to make sure Eightlander cannot do any significant damage. Possibly get some damage back in, but Santa... Santa knows that they can get away with investing into army, just because they don't have to worry about... Like, they have to... They don't have to worry about getting out-expanded. But they do have to worry about Eightlander attacking them early, and going for a rush. Yeah, the Proxy Absolvers has been a big part of this latest meta, and it's always scary to, to be on the forefront of that, so you need to be careful not to take too many damage on that base. And because of that, Santa just not going for an expansion, getting a lot of units early, but still some Aether to be able to take up either Frums or those uh, Resonance. The tier 2 units that can really dislodge those type of attacks. That's going to take a little while, which gives Eatlander an opening. Ooh, once the party goes down. Well, Micro by Santa Claus. They should have center controlled, but they don't care. They want to make sure. They want to make sure State Lander doesn't. Yeah, they want to make sure Atlanta doesn't start expanding. Yeah, he needs to keep an eye on that. Sees the expansion. Well, sees the lack of expansions. Okay, behind us, I'm not going to expand either. It's been a bit the gameplay lately. If your opponent expands, you got to be careful. Uh, as Aru, you can't really expand before your opponent. If you do, at least in the very first minutes of the game, you'll be in trouble from those absolver pushes. You should just tech up like your opponent. And, uh, yeah, get that tech advantage. Or, in this case, take out what economic advantage your opponent might end up having. Just kill it early. Oh, yeah, but this might be dangerous. Santa needs a way to get out. Don't want to lose those units for free. And, okay, kill... He loses one, but, okay, those Dervish are the end of those Bone Stalkers. No, and Santa that's it. loses his whole army. Ooh. Expensive loss to begin with. But he is I mean, teching up to something new. What is he teching to? They are teching to Resonance. Okay. Or possibly Icor, but they're taking the Amber Womb anyway. Probably Resonance. Yep, definitely Resonance. There's the Neurocyte. We have our answer. So Santa Claus... I Honestly, this is working out better for them than they would, I think they would have expected. There are no Absolvers. The Dervish hmm. have an even harder time against Resonance than Absolvers do. Yeah. So Santa well, Claus, Santa Claus pretty much has the perfect counter. Yeah, but they're both playing one base right now, so n neither of them can really attack into each other. The towers are well positioned. With the Bastion or the tower, it's really tough to get a right position to attack into your opponent. So at this point, the Headliner's going to be a bit disadvantaged. Might lose his own army like Santa did er uh, earlier this game. And uh, yeah, here comes at least one Zakal as well. It's all about position. Santa has the range advantage, so it's all about microing and keeping his opponent at bay. Getting a nice arc here. But here comes Heaven's Aegis for, for Eightlander. He gets the bash. He goes for the bash at the very start, but then goes for the Bone Stalkers, jumping on top of them. But the Bone Stalkers have a nice arc and kill some of those units, even with the Heaven's Aegis helping out. Eightlander moving, trying to fight a fighting retreat. Going the wrong way. Are they trying to keep going in this? They don't have any way of getting out of here. The only way it's out is through, and Santa Claus is making that as difficult as possible. Like I said, ZK, this is going to be an army wipe in Santa Claus's favor. At that point, without a second goal, well, Atlanta was going for his natural at the same time. But might just be too little too late. If he can get it up, he might be able to get back in this game from the economy. Uh, getting the Absolvers will help with any type of defense, but the Resonant is here. The Resonant, the great counter to these, to these Absolvers. 
Santa One is down? ready to yeah. push through. Counter, but not in the numbers they need quite, quite yet. Itlander oh, no. has an opening. This this attack here is going to decide how this goes. Yeah, if it'll... Santa Claus can break the break Itlander's small force they've rebuilt, then it is over. Yeah, don't jump on that. No. Let's Santa Claus plans else. Let's see if we can get anything out from there. Okay, there's the... There's the siege... Uh, there's the... He's deploying there. He's getting... Oh. He's getting the blood well, so from the blood well, he'll get even more range for this. And killing your opponent's production is pretty strong, so at some point, Atlanta will have to jump on his opponent. It seems he chose the moment now. Absolver's pushing forward, deploying themselves, and here come the Ooh, miniguns. In range, everything. too! On top of the Wardens, Santa Claus does not have the army. Like I said, you, you need the numbers, and Santa Claus simply had not gotten the numbers yet. Yeah, deploying a bit too early here as Atlanta's reinforcements came really fast for his production structures right there. Uh, and now we just look at the army value, 2,000 to 1,000. Bitliner with about twice as much as opponent. And it's going to come down to this next fight once more. See who could get the advantage. Bitliner might not want to push forward. He has the expansion slightly faster than his opponent. And from that, he can take the economical advantage to push forward to the next steps of the game. Worth noting, Bitliner did see Santa was expanding. They knew that Santa did not have much of an army behind that first assault. So they would know like this there isn't much to worry about. If they, can, if they can force a retreat, Santa has nothing behind this. And that was true. Yep. It is always scary though to attack your opponent. You never know if the, the resident sieged up, deployed at the top of the base, and oh well, Santa being cheeky again sending sending another uh It's like Dervish, but Icor or but like Dervish, but Aru. Yep. Icor's shooting acid at the moats. Moats are not happy with that. Trying going for the surround. Uh, but not quite able to, heading for the security of that Bastion, and behind us, pushing forward for the main push. But there are four Resonance, and Heaven J just comes down again. Itliner going for it, he's jumping on top of his opponent, and Santa wisely retre uh, retreats to the top of the ramp. This one, he's very scared, he needs to keep pushing. He needs to defend his natural, but is it enough? Those four Absolvers are set up, they're in range, attacking one of those Resonance. Goes down, Underspine here to give the range. And all the units are down, only three Absolvers left. Is he really pushing forward? Santa attacking they... the Absolvers. First one goes down, only two left. They're dishing a lot of damage, but not quite enough as one goes down and the last one is left. Braiding quite well, but not quite well enough. Successful defense for Santa Claus, not as Pyrrhic as it had first appeared. Yeah, well, 600 to 200, you know, it, it was a trade here. Santa did It was a winning. trade. It, it was, was a trade, but Itlander did not get any significant damage. They didn't give it to the expansion. They didn't really kill any symbiotes either. This is this worked out pretty well for Santa. Yep, but only one resonance left. So, you know, they're always resetting their zone control units, and it's all about those zone control units in these fights. They do so much damage. You, you need to keep them powerful and in the right position. At this point, uh, they're both down to only one of them each. This has been a bit of a meat grinder of a game, both just trading out their units again and again and again. I'm looking for whoever goes air first. No, like, it's a little bit... I mean, Itlander already did get a Warden, but I mean, really focus on it. Itlander, like, they have a Reliquary coming up. Looks like they're prepared for the potential of Santa going for air. Oh, no. Santa wasn't looking. He gets jumped on. Gets one Bone Stalker. Uh, but he trades it out for one Sipari, so even trade there. Santa doesn't have a whole lot of map control. They're relying now on being a little sneaky. Santa sneaky? No, he would never. Oh, that's not Santa at all. No, I, I feel like that's more something Itliner would do, but not this <laughs> time. Itliner's just playing it straight forward, just playing the straight macro game mm. with. Oh what? Oh. Okay, <laughs> Santa's just saw a drop in fire ability in the backside of the opponent's. This is something they do with the Orzum oh, or wow. have done with Orzum. Not something they've done with Zol before, but to great effect, getting rid of half of the moats. Yeah, he killed like four for like of no them. cost either. Yeah. Santa had so much free pyre that. Battles have not been making pyre abilities useful. Wait, is Lander down to only two moats as well behind this? Oof, that's a that's a big cost to the economy. Luckily, there's still there's still the Bastion that gives one full base worth of alloy, but he might want a bit more than that. He needs to keep mining. He needs his paces to get as much as possible. And that Icor being constantly annoying this whole game. And if anything gives Santa an advantage, it has been that Icor killing the economy of his opponent. That's I mean, that gave Santa all the time they needed to rebuild, which is what we're seeing now. Santa has rebuilt. They have their army in position, going for the push. The Absolvers are not deployed. Oh, a few of them are just in range. It's all being summoned once again. More of a distraction than anything else, but the distraction is more than enough. These Resonants are able to take out the Absolvers. Santa Claus 
breaking through Idlander's army, and Idlander has nothing to stop this. And that's still free resonance. Free resonance have free reign on everything. As Idlander GG's out of the game as the production were about to get destroyed, and Santa moves on to the winners winners finals 2-0. Well, congratulations, Santa. You are going to be up against whoever between Magical and Waijizu won. Which I don't think that's done yet. No, it's not quite done. Uh, let's see. Have we seen any comments yet? I, yeah, I think Santa, Magical probably won the first one. We'll have to wait a bit to see who ends up winning that one. And uh, yeah, Santa moves up 2 0. That was actually a quite interesting game. We saw more early game than we're used to, not just. <laughs> teching up to the to the main base that we were talking about before, which we want a bit more of, right? We don't want people to always expand because right, it's right, fun to have, yeah, it's fun to have yeah. a variety. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the thing I was talking about before, so I'm glad to have seen it. Yeah. So so far, like this is part of designing the game, right? Sometimes you want to go for the expand first because the, the more economy means bigger army means more map control and everything from that but then you can just get destroyed by those absolver pushes which means aru has to expand a bit later after croft you see croft not expanding you need to be careful and that's something i actually like about it right i like that okay sometimes you just can't expand first you just got to be careful and gain advantages in other ways which santa and the, at the end of the day did getting a, a few uh bone stalkers into opponent's base mm -hmm. uh that ended up losing them all but it's all about but hey you dealt the economic damage that was the yeah. thing you, it, it paid for itself and then the I mean, that one is kind of even, but the Ikor coming in later, that one sanded the game. Oh, yeah. And then even Zol coming in for more harass. Oh, Santa, <laughs> Santa's free reign yep, on back, Zol. Yep, backline Pyre abilities. That is a Santa special. Yeah, the, that free reign of Pyre from Santa, JP map control, is all, that's what it's all about. Being able to just keep on pushing, keep on pushing till it ends. Pretty much. Oh, all right. We are going to be waiting a little bit from the looks of it for Magical and Zoo to get their match finished. So we're going to go for a bit of a small break, and then we'll be back in a couple minutes. So stay tuned. Sounds good. Oh, oops. Okay.